Allison fumbled with her radio as she rounded the slight bend on Crescent Road. The early morning hour meant that no one else would be driving along the back road, so she wasn't concerned with oncoming traffic. The popping of her tires boomed like a shotgun blast. Allison's entire body clenched. The steering wheel jerked in her hands. Screeching metal resonated through the wooded area as the rims dug into the concrete road. The lone working headlight in her sedan bobbed and weaved as she fought to keep the car on the road. Her foot mashed the brake pedal to the floor. Vibrations ran up her arms from the shaking steering wheel. The car skidded sideways, the front right rim slamming into a pothole she'd complained to the sheriff about more than a dozen times. Every morning on her way to work, Allison had to swerve around it for fear of popping one of her tires. The rim dropped into the hole, with the car still doing forty miles an hour. The sudden stop flipped the car sideways into a barrel roll. Allison's stomach constricted even further as the weightless feeling of freefall consumed her. Her hair flew around in wild snaps, the wheel yanked free from her grip. The windshield shattered. Her door flew open, glass stabbed at her face, the roof bowed inward. Swirls of spinning trees, rending metal, and yellow sparks filled her vision. And then the car stopped flipping, landed on its roof, and slid to a stop in a drainage ditch beside the road. Harsh breaths sucked through her teeth as Allison dangled upside down her seatbelt suspending her in midair. She stared through the empty space where her windshield had been only a few seconds before. Quiet overtook the woods again, save the thunder in her ears as her pulse hammered away. Slowly, as if just awakening from a nightmare, Allison touched her face, her neck, her breasts. Everything seemed to be in one piece. An owl hooted from an obscured perch behind her. How long she stayed there, held in place by the straps digging into her shoulder and waist, she didn't know. Blood rushed to her head, blushing her face even more than the initial shock of the accident had. Allison reached for the ceiling and brushed glass away from the spot below her head. She tested the strength in her arm before pressing firmly against the dented roof, hoping to stymie the force of what she was about to do. Taking a deep breath, she reached down to her hip with her right hand. Her fingers found the clasp of her seatbelt and pressed the button. It took more pressure than usual. When it finally released, she fell to her shoulders, the jolt forcing a grunt from her. God, she would be sore the next day. After worming her way around, Allison carefully brushed more glass aside so she could place both of her hands down. The contents of her purse littered the inside of her car. She didn't bother picking anything up. Arthur's Creek, the small West Virginia town she lived outside of, only had a single cellular provider which charged exorbitant rates. On her meager paycheck, Allison just couldn't justify owning a cell phone. So she was one of the few people in America who didn't have one practically attached to the side of her face at all times. It had never been an issue before now when she was bloody disoriented in need of medical care and a stiff drink. Careful not to stick her hands in the broken glass covering everything, Allison crawled through the small, misshapen space where her window used to be. She had to nearly flatten herself out to squeeze through. What should have been a refreshing breath of early morning air reeked of burnt rubber and gasoline. Smoke wafted around the car. Allison dragged her legs through the window and let her body slump into the drainage ditch for several seconds, waiting on her heart to slow down. Though she was only thirty-five, she couldn't help but wonder if she was dangling at the precipice of a stroke. After several seconds, she forced herself to stand up, ignoring the way her hands and knees quaked from shock. She stared at her upside-down car, absent-mindedly picking marble-sized chunks of windshield from her hair. "'Holy shit!' She muttered, 